Western media is not new. You're journalists. You work in the media. Do you see what we call the media lie? I think many people have understood now. Most of them are media liars. They spent their time lying, manipulating. And today, when I watch them in their reports, it's shameful, and it's very good. They even prove to all of Africa, to the whole world, that they're liars. And it's good. I think the young Africans and the young Burkina Faso people should stop listening to them. Because they manipulated us for a long time. You have several examples. Let's take Ivory Coast. Who doesn't hate Guavo? Our generation. They lied so much about him. They said nonsense. They put pressure by the information. You end up hating the person. They make a model of the person to impose it in your mind. You end up hating the person. We take him to the CPI. Then we say he's innocent. He's guilty of nothing. It's serious. We let Gaddafi die. Here are the consequences. Dictators. They did it by their own organization. They lie, RFI, France 24, Le Monde, Young Africa. They have to do the job we ask them to do. They're not free. Many media don't live by advertising. It's false. They pay you and give you the information they want. In Burkina Faso, people say we attack journalists, but it's not true. We have to choose between earning our bread and loving our country. They fight for their country. It's their advantage. We have to get away from that. We see national media taking these media as reference. They cite certain newspapers as liars. They have no information. Their reporters are liars. When they want to attack a country, they paint it as they want. They say what they want to make everyone hate and let them do what they want. We're in 2024. It's a game of chess. We'll see what happens. You have to get away from these media. Hello, Your Excellency. In connection with the shooting, some sources say there were helicopter movements in Ouagadougou and Douri. What explains these helicopter movements? We said we followed a helicopter to Douri. When you see big people lying, it's pitiful. Actually, Wednesday was the day after the attack in Mansila. We launched an operation in Mansila. The helicopters sent reinforcements, that's it. They took off to Dori to take 9th Brigade elements. They took the hygiene elements in Ouagadougou for the operation in Mansila. That's how we learned it. It's true, they have a tactic. They exploit the few neurons left to do something real. They always take real information and build their big lies. If you're not vigilant, you'll think it's true. The helicopters really flew over. It's a fact. Everyone saw it. But why did they fly over? That's the question. They build their big lies around it. Everyone saw the helicopters flying over. They use it to say they fled. It's false. It's the same tactic they used when the Irish landed in Ouagadougou. There were six Irish flights in Ouagadougou. It's true. When I look at them, they lie so much that they build their big lies around it. They say they're Malian soldiers. I wouldn't say they're Malian soldiers. They're ISIS soldiers. They're Malian soldiers. They can come to Burkina Faso whenever they want. But it's false. The Russians are already here. They're working together. Why would they come? They couldn't help us do what we wanted. It doesn't mean anything. I can assure you that the helicopters were made by the United Nations. At the end of the mission, the ammunition was left in Gao and Bamako. The Tombuktu ship took our ammunition and evacuated it to Bamako. They destroyed the ship. We found other ways to send it there. We picked up ammunition from other countries. 
There's a structure of the United Nations that's in operation and has to supervise it. It's the ammunition from the mission we picked up. In Gao, we had an FPI. In Tombuktu, we had our men, that's all. But this is all strange. It's false. There was nothing. Yesterday, or the day before yesterday, the FPI had to communicate. But we didn't even want them to communicate. The soldiers' parents started calling them. We asked them if they wanted to meet. They said they were in operation. Some were in Manzala, some were in Bani. They asked if the FBI could communicate so we could stop bothering them and let them focus on their mission. Do you see what they're doing? It's not good. It's their wish, but they won't see it come true. It's an insult to our soldiers. Our soldiers are much smarter than them. They know what they're doing, where the country is, and where we're going. In some areas, we even talked about power holidays and that in the army, there would be treaties to nominate your successor. Were you informed about this treaty? If it's a holiday, who comes to take it? They say we fled to Nigeria. They didn't come to take it. What are they doing there? They didn't come to take it. They don't understand anything. But if they were paid and didn't reach their goal, they have to lie to justify what they're doing. It's not just them. They wander the world, they lie, they work with terrorists to kill Burkina Faso, believing they can change things. It's a revolution. I don't understand. If it's a holiday, they have to come and take it. These people have no children. They have nothing in the army. And you're sitting there trying to manipulate other people's children, hoping to do what you want. Are they smart? It's an insult. It's an insult to the Burkina Faso people to take people for children, to tell lies and think people will swallow it. No, people are smart. We're in 2024. It's not the time when people can see information and jump on it. But they have several goals. It's chaos. It's destabilizing Burkina Faso because they don't like what's happening in Burkina Faso. And that comforts us. It makes us want to reach our goal. So don't be afraid of that. A lot of information has been released. What is your message to Burkina Faso and to the diaspora who are questioning the transition? People will understand. We're here. Maybe they'll say it's fake. Come shake my hand. Maybe they'll think it's real. At least it's not fake. They have all the technology. We don't have that level yet. We're free in our country. People shouldn't worry. I said they have many goals. One of the goals is to scare investors by saying Burkina Faso is unstable. You know, Burkina Faso has been one of the 10 most attractive countries in Africa. Investors want to come to Burkina because they see the vision. They see that this country can develop with what we're doing. A lot of people come to invest in Burkina. When they do that, it scares investors. That's their goal. So tell Burkina Faso and other investors to come to Burkina. What they say is very false. Burkina is stable. They can come. They can believe in Burkina. All those who read the media are lying. It's what they say. That's one of their goals. They have a plan, but we know we're waiting for them. Maybe next time we'll tell them to watch TV. It's not just the next plan. They're trying to hack applications in Burkina Faso to disrupt certain things. We're waiting for them. They're not doing anything. When they start lying, it's because of something. But we're waiting for them. We'll give them the right answer. Those who are inside and continue to manipulate will understand us. Now it's over. We've given them time to tell their lies. We'll act firmly. We don't want people to go outside and say things like that. It doesn't mean anything.
It's unfortunate that Burkina Faso is outside and participating in this. There are many voices that continue to be heard. We don't know what we've done to them, but they're still lying. No one will listen to them. We want to reassure everyone that Burkina Faso is still peaceful and undisturbed. We're still working for the happiness of Burkina Faso. With everything that's happening, are you afraid for your life? How do you deal with everything that's happening? The reason is that the emotion is black. They're playing with emotions. When they finally make everyone understand that they're the cause of the attacks, they try to use that to create emotion. Because in their heads, black people have emotions. We fight for our emotions. They made an analysis about the attacks in Rock, in Gaskinda, in Damiba. That's how it is in their heads. You can't change that. We have to create an unfortunate incident to hope that we'll leave. Because Burkina Faso has emotions. They don't know Burkina Faso. We're not just emotions. We know where we're going now. People have understood the essence of our struggle. We're not afraid. We've never been afraid because we've had the chance to live in a situation where we should have lost our lives. I'm telling you, there are situations where only God knows how we got out. Otherwise, we wouldn't have stopped here. I often sit down and think about certain things. I ask myself, God knows what he's doing. If it's fear, we don't know what fear is. We never know what fear is. If we wanted to know what fear is, we would have started to be afraid when we started to live in San Bourgeoisie. They expect us to have an account in their country to get up one day and say, if you do this or that, we'll close down. They'll never have our accounts there. We don't care. All we do is for Burkina Faso. We don't even want to leave Burkina Faso. We're at peace here. There's a lot of space elsewhere. If we want to do tourism, we go to Bamako, Niamey, or other cities. We don't care to go elsewhere. We're good in our space here. We don't know what fear is. We've decided to fight for our country. We know the risks around us. We've given up our lives for this. Why should we be afraid? We've given up our youth for a mission for our country. So there's no fear. You can leave without fear. The next phase to which we have to be very careful is artificial intelligence. Be careful. I sometimes see videos of me speaking Spanish or Chinese. I thank those who do it because they can translate our speech. But it's very dangerous. This phase will come. Hacking and all that will come. So stay focused. Do the patriotic work you do. Thank you. Be brave. I hope your morale is back up. Don't be afraid. They're here for you. It's been exactly a week since the incident happened. I'm going to go and see where the rocket fell. But know one thing, those who are here to protect you, who unfortunately caused the incident, because you see them posted around, they probably tire you a lot lately, every morning, because they have reinforced security for several months, which leads to a lot of searches and disagreements. But it's for you. It's so that someone can't come and hurt you here because you are very important. It's a strategic place. It is in the case of the student heir that wanting to verify a certain number of things, unfortunately someone had the shot fired. Those who were next to it and the one who fired were also injured. So they were transported to Yalgado that day. God bless them, they left Yalgado, with some sequels of course because the rocket doesn't forgive, especially at the level of the hand. Unfortunately, the rocket went to the court of the RTB here, and we can still go back, thanks to God, because there were no victims as such. There were two injured, taken care of by the president's infirmary. Immediately, as soon as the council could come, we also noticed the damage and realized that the situation of the injured was stable. I hope it will get even better. As a civilian, it's normal, the trauma. You've never heard of a rocket shot next to you, even if you're like a target. It's understandable. 
We set up a team of psychologists to try to take care of these two injured and all the staff. It's not to draw blood against you. It's just an incident, it happens. In the handling of weapons, it always happens. That's why in the ISTC there are rules. Unfortunately, incidents can happen, it always happens. And often it's even unfortunate. So we can go back, thanks to God, that there were no deaths. All the injured are recovering. We say, God, thank you. Nobody wants to be surprised. So when an incident happens, everyone wants to make sure that these work tools work very well. It's normal, it's logical. But we're in the city and these incidents shouldn't happen in the city. So don't be more worried than that. I hope the tension is going down. It took us a while to come and see you for just one reason. We could explain to you why. Otherwise, the next day we could come and see you. But we did it wisely, and I think you'll understand. You'll have the opportunity to ask your questions, and we'll answer them. We're going to use a broken stick to relieve your stress, because I see that there's so much information that's leaking everywhere. You can ask your questions too. Hello and welcome. Thank you. Regarding the incident, you should have told us that we should have done more to feed the social media. Even the media that talk about human mutinies and your probable escape to an unknown destination. What exactly happened there? Maybe they were going to say that the director of the TV station was also removed. Well, there's nothing to it. That's it. And often we're used to saying a certain number of terms. People say not to say it, but that's the reality. There are apathetes, there are enemies of the nation, and there's a speech by Sankara that I saw you broadcast the last time I followed. It's up to date. It's like we're here today, and he's talking. That's the reality. There's absolutely nothing to it. We're here, and everyone should be careful. The incident happened while we were in council. And if people had run away, would there have been a press conference? There would have been, right? But since they're used to lying, since they breathe, they try to entrap people. You shouldn't listen to these individuals. They want to distract people. That's not important. We don't run away. Never. We're soldiers. And that's the last thing that comes to mind. We don't back down. We don't give up. And we don't kneel before anyone, except our parents and God. That's our mentality. They told us everything they wanted, and we watched them precisely because we didn't come early. We had to feed them their lies. And that's what I was saying. Maybe they were going to come and say that the director was kidnapped, and his wife, who believed in their ineptitude, was going to watch them. But now I see that they're lying. They hate themselves. They're intellectually constipated. And that's why they have to lie, because they probably made a pact with the imperialists. They have to work to make them believe. They're scams. We're here. We keep working. We're with you every morning. But we didn't want to let them continue until they drowned themselves. I think they're well drowned now. All of Africa has understood that they're apathetic. They're enemies of the nation. Otherwise, they wouldn't have done anything.